my name is Dr. Colleen McDermott and I am a urogynecologist. Today we are going to talk about post-operative urinary retention or POR. Often after pelvic floor surgery, women will have difficulty emptying their bladder. In that situation, you may have to go home with a catheter. Today we are going to talk about the different types of catheters that your surgeon may offer you. Here are examples of the three different catheter types that your surgeon may use after surgery. The first is the commonly used Foley catheter which is seen here along with the leg bag that you may be discharged home with. The second are two examples of options for self catheterization. And the third is an example of a suprapubic tube or SPT which is another common form of catheterization that you may have to go home with. Transurethral indwelling catheter, or Foley catheter as it's commonly called. This catheter is inserted into your bladder through your urethra by a nurse or by your surgeon before you go home. Urine is then collected into a bag, which is often attached to your leg, that you will need to empty regularly. The catheter is usually removed in the clinic within 3 to 10 days after your surgery. The pro to this type of catheter is that it is easy to use and there is no manipulation of the catheter through the urethra. The cons to this catheter is that it has the highest risk of bladder infection. You have to wear a leg bag which could be uncomfortable and there may be discomfort or pain in the urethra while wearing the catheter through the duration of this time. This is an example of a transurethral indwelling catheter or a Foley catheter. The end of the catheter is inserted into the bladder at the time of surgery or sometimes in the hospital by the nurse or surgeon. The catheter is kept in place by inflating a small balloon which you can see here. Once inflated, we will then attach this end of the catheter to a leg bag. The leg bag is attached to your upper thigh with these two adjustable belts. And the bag will have to be emptied regularly through this pivot which is located at the bottom of the bag and can be done so just by simply opening and closing. Here is the Foley catheter and how it is sitting in the urethra you can see that the end is attached to the leg bag which is next to the upper thigh. Of note, do not try to remove this catheter on your own. Again, there is a small balloon that is sitting in the bladder that is keeping the catheter in place and this has to be deflated and then removed by a nurse or physician in the clinic after your surgery. Clean intermittent catheterization. Here you will urinate as usual on the toilet. After each attempt at urination you will then insert a small plastic tube or catheter into the urethra to see if there is any leftover urine in the bladder. You can stop this type of catheterization as soon as the amount of urine that is left over is low enough as predetermined by your surgeon's instructions. The pro to this type of catheter is that it has the fastest return of bladder function. The downside to this catheter is that there is an intermediate risk of bladder infection. It is often technically difficult to insert the catheter into the urethra after pelvic floor surgery and there can also be pain or discomfort in the urethra while doing this. Here are some examples of catheters that you may be sent home with if you are self-catheterizing after your surgery. You may be sent home with shorter catheters such as these, or you may be sent home with somewhat longer ones. Either option is good. You will also be sent home with some lubricant to help insertion of these catheters. And often the nurse will teach you how to do this either before your surgery in the clinic or at the hospital. If you are self-catheterizing at home 
every time you void, you first try to void naturally, and you will do so on the toilet and empty your bladder into a voiding hat. You will record the volume of urine that comes out and then discard the urine into the toilet. Immediately after that, you will then self-catheterize. You will use the catheter that was supplied to you by the hospital. You will put some lubricant at the end of the catheter and then gently insert the tip of the catheter into the urethra. You will then hold the catheter in place and empty your bladder until no more urine is flowing. You will empty the catheter into the voiding hat and once again record the volume. Once there's no more urine coming out, you will then quickly remove the catheter from your urethra. One more time, this is how you insert the tip of the catheter into the urethra. You hold it in place until the urine stops flowing and then you quickly remove it. Suprapubic catheter or suprapubic tube. This catheter is inserted through an incision just above your pubic bone at the time of surgery. You will urinate as usual on the toilet and after each urination you will then open the tube to see if there is any leftover urine in the bladder. The tube is removed as soon as the amount of urine that is left over is low enough. The pros to this type of catheter are that it has the lowest risk of bladder infection of the three catheter types. It is relatively easy to use and there is no manipulation of the catheter through the urethra. The cons to this type of catheter are that the tube is inserted before we know if you need a catheter to go home with. There is also a risk of urinary leakage around the catheter, which is relatively rare. There is also a risk of complication at the time of insertion of the catheter, which is also extremely rare. And there could be discomfort at the abdominal incision at the point of insertion. Here is an example of a suprapubic catheter or suprapubic tube, or SPT as we commonly call it. Here you can see the tip of the catheter, which will be in your bladder, and it is held in place by a pigtail configuration, which is kept like that with this suture. Approximately the top five inches of the catheter is what is sticking out from your skin. At the end, you will have a stopcock, and this is how you open and close the catheter in order to empty your bladder. Here you can see the SPT after it has been inserted into the bladder. The incision is just above the pubic bone and is usually two to three millimeters in length. Approximately five inches is sticking out from the skin and at the end we have our stopcock which is how you open and close the catheter. Every time you need to urinate you will first try to avoid naturally through the urethra on the toilet into a voiding hat. You will record the amount that comes out of your bladder. You will then empty the voiding hat and then open the stopcock to see how much is left over. You will also record the amount which we call the post void residual volume. After the urine stops flowing, you will then close the catheter. I will often use a three-way stopcock attached to the end of the SPT simply because it breaks less easily. Here you can see the valve is pointing towards the patient's abdomen and this means that the catheter is closed or off. In order to open it, we simply rotate the valve 90 degrees to the white cap and it is now open and you can empty the bladder through the catheter. Once the urine stops flowing, then you just flip it back and point it towards your abdomen. When it is time to remove the SBT, you can either go to your physician's office to have it removed or you can remove it yourself at home. 
In order to do so, first you will empty your bladder on the toilet. You can do this naturally or through the catheter, but we just want to make sure that your bladder is completely empty before removal. Once that is done, you will then take a simple pair of regular scissors and you will cut the catheter right in the middle, approximately two to four inches above the incision. You can then discard the top piece. You may get a little dribble of urine after you've cut it and that is fine. When you are ready, you will firmly grasp the end of the catheter. I usually tell my patients to count to three and quickly pull it directly out from the abdomen. One, two, three. Here you can see that the catheter has been removed in its entirety and you can see the pigtail configuration. Once it's out, you simply throw this into the garbage. You will have a little bit of drainage from the incision site for approximately 12 to 18 hours. So we ask that you put a simple maxi pad over the incision site and stick it to the front of your underwear. Removing the suprapubic tube at home is something that is very simple and easy to do. It is nothing to worry about. If you are doing it yourself, I often recommend that you do it in the standing position, using your dominant hand to remove the catheter directly away from your abdomen. If you're having someone help you remove the catheter, then I recommend that you lay flat on a bed or a sofa and have them remove it by pulling it straight up to the ceiling. Again, this should be done very quickly, and I often say count to three and pull it out just like ripping off a Band-Aid.